Yellowstone plumbing exposed, the supervolcano's hotspot plume details, the most detailed seismic images yet published of the plumbing that feeds the Yellowstone supervolcano, shows a plume of hot and molten rock rising at an angle from the northwest at a depth of at least 410 miles. This is according to the University of Utah. It contradicts claims that there is no deep plume, only shallow hot rock moving slowly, uh, boiling like a soup. And uh, the plume shows that it's at least 400 miles deep at the mantle transition zone. It's coming from there. Now, a related University of Utah study used gravity measurements to indicate the banana-shaped magma chamber. Uh, we're talking about the chamber here. We're not talking about the reservoir, which is under it. The magma chamber of hot and molten rock a few miles beneath Yellowstone is 20% larger than previously believed, so a future cataclysmic eruption could even be larger than thought. So because of the fact that the chamber is 20% larger than thought. The study of Yellowstone's plume also suggests the same hotspot that feeds Yellowstone volcanism also triggered the Columbia River flood basalts that buried parts of Oregon, Washington State, and Idaho with lava starting 17 million years ago. Those are key findings in four National Science Foundation funded studies in the latest issues of Journal of Volcanology Geothermal Research. The studies were led by Robert B. Smith, research professor and professor emeritus of geophysics at University of Utah and coordinating scientist for the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Please support my Patreon account the daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Smith said we have a clear image using seismic waves from earthquakes, showing a mantle plume that extends from beneath Yellowstone. The plume angles downwards 150 miles to the west-northwest of Yellowstone and reaches a depth of at least 410 miles, Smith says, and the study estimates the plume is mostly hot rock with 1% to 2% molten rock in a sponge-like voids within the hot rock. Some researchers have doubted the existence of a mantle plume feeding Yellowstone, urging instead that the area's volcanic and hydrothermal features are fed by convection, the boiling-like rising of hot rock and sinking of cooler rock from relatively shallow depths of only 185 miles to 250 miles. The hot spot, a deep plume, blobs, and shallow magma. Some 17 million years ago, the Yellowstone hotspot was located beneath the Oregon-Idaho-Nevada border, the region feeding a plume of hot and molten rock that produced a caldera eruptions, the biggest kind of volcanic eruption on Earth. And as North America slid southwest over this hot spot, the plume generated more than 140 huge eruptions that produced a chain of gigantic craters, 140 huge eruptions. These giant uh, craters of calderas extended from Oregon, Idaho, Nevada border northeast to the current site of Yellowstone National Park, where huge caldera eruptions happened 2.05 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 642,000 years ago. These are the super eruptions we're talking about. These eruptions were 2,500, 280, and 1,000 times bigger than, respectively, than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens volcano, the eruptions covered as much as half of the continental United States with inches to feet of volcanic ash. The Yellowstone caldera, 40 miles by 25 miles, is the remnant of that last giant eruption. The new study reinforces the view that the hot and partly molten rock feeding volcanic geothermal activity in Yellowstone is not vertical but has three components. The 45-mile-wide plume that rises through Earth's upper mantle from at least 410 miles beneath the surface. The plume angles outwards to the east-southeast until it reaches the colder rock of the North American crustal plate, 
and flattens out like a 300 mile wide pancake about 50 miles beneath Yellowstone. The plume includes several wider blobs at depth of 355 miles, 310 miles, and 265 miles. This conduit is not one tube of constant thickness, says Smith. It varies in width at various depths, and we call those things blobs. Now, a little uh, understood zone between 50 miles and 10 miles deep, in which blobs of hot, partly molten, molten rock break off, of the flattened top of the plume and slowly rise to feed the magma reservoir directly beneath Yellowstone National Park. The magma reservoir, 3.7 times to 10 miles to 10 miles beneath the Yellowstone caldera, the reservoir is most, mostly sponge-like hot rock with spaces filled with molten rock, and it looks like it's up to 8% to 15% melt, Smith said, and that's a lot, he said. The researchers previously believed the magma chamber measured roughly 6 to 15 miles from southeast to northwest and 20 or 25 miles from southwest to northeast. But new measurements indicate the reservoir extends at least another 13 miles outside the caldera northeast boundary. Smith says the gravity and other data show the magma body is an elongated structure that looks like a banana with the ends up. It's a lot larger than we thought. I would say about 20% by volume. This would argue there might be a larger magma source available for a future eruption. Images of the magma reservoir were made based on the strength of the Earth's gravity at various points in Yellowstone. Hot and molten rock is less dense than cold rock, so the tug of gravity is measurable lower above magma reservoirs. The Yellowstone caldera, like other calderas on Earth, puffs upward, puffs downward repeatedly over the ages, usually without erupting. Since 2004, the caldera floor has risen three inches per year, suggesting recharge of the magma body beneath it. How to view the plume? Seismic imaging uses earthquakes, waves that travel through the Earth and are recorded by seismometers. Waves travel more slowly through hotter rock and more quickly in cooler rock, just as x-rays are combined to make a CT scan, images of features in the human body, seismic wave data are melded to produce images of Earth's interior. The study, the Yellowstone Geodynamics Project, was conducted during 1999-2005. It used an average of 160 temporary and permanent seismic stations, as many as 200, to detect waves from some 800 earthquakes with the station spaced 10 miles to 22 miles apart, closer than any other networks to better able, uh, better able to see underground. Some 160 global positioning systems, GPSs, GP, GPS stations measured crustal movements, and by integrating seismic and GPS data, it's like a lens that made the upper 125 miles much clearer and allowed us to see deeper down to 410 miles, Smith says. The study also shows warm rock, not as hot as a plume, stretching from Yellowstone southwest of the Snake River Plain at depths of 20 miles to 60 miles, and the rock is still warm from eruptions from before the hot spot reached Yellowstone. A plume blowing in the two inch per year mantle wind. Seismic images show a slow zone from the top of the plume which is 50 miles deep, straight down to about 150 miles. But then, as you travel down the plume, it tilts to the northwest as it dives to a depth of 410 miles, Smith says. That is the base of the global transition zone. From 250 miles to 410 miles, that is the boundary between the upper and lower mantle, the layers between the Earth's crust. So this plume goes all the way down to the transition zone. At that depth, the plume is about 410 miles beneath the town of Winds Wisdom, Montana, which is 150 miles west-northwest of Yellowstone, Smith says. He says, it would not surprise me if the plume extends even deeper, perhaps originating from the core mantle boundary, 1,800 miles deep. Why does the plume rise straight upward, though? This plume material wants to, become, to come up vertically, wants to buoyantly rise. 
Smith says, but he gets caught in the wind of the upper mantle flow like smoking, smoke rising in the breeze. Except in this case, the breeze of slowly flowing upper mantle rock is moving horizontally two inches a year. So it's rising two inches a year. It's uh, hot around the Snake River Plain in Idaho. It's under the area of Montana on the west-northwest section around Hebgen Lake. Now, while the crustal plate moves southwest, the warm underlying mantle slowly boils down to convection, with warm areas moving upwards and cooler areas downwards. Northwest of Yellowstone, this convection is such that the plume is blown east-southeast by mantle convection, so it angles upward towards Yellowstone. Scientists have debated for years whether Yellowstone's volcanism is fed by a plume rising from deep in the earth or by shallow churning in the upper mantle caused by movements of the overlying crust. Smith says the new study has produced the most detailed image of the Yellowstone plume yet published, but a preliminary study by other researchers suggests Yellowstone's plumbing goes deeper than 410 miles, ballooning below the depth into a wider zone of hot rock that extends at at least 620 miles deep. The notion that a deep plume feeds Yellowstone got more support from a study published indicating that the Hawaiian spot, hotspot, which created the Hawaiian Islands, is fed by a plume that extends downward at least 600, uh, 930 miles, tilting southeast. A common source for Yellowstone and the Columbia River Plateau basalts uh, based on how the Yellowstone plumbing slants now, Smith and colleagues projected on a map where the plume might have originated at depth when the hot spot was erupting at the Oregon-Idaho-Nevada border area from 17 million to almost 12 million years ago, they saw overlap between the zones within the earth where eruptions originated near the Oregon-Idaho-Nevada border and where the famous Columbia River basalt eruptions originated when they were almost uh, the, when they were most vigorous 17 million to 14 million years ago. And their conclusion is the Yellowstone hotspot plume might have fed those gigantic lava eruptions which covered much of the eastern Oregon, western Washington states. Smith says, I argue it is a common source, it's neat stuff, and it fits together. Smith conducted the seismic study with six University of Utah present and former geophysicists, former postdoctorate researcher Michael Jordan, of SINTEF Petroleum Research in Norway, Stephen Hausen of Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, postdoctor Christine Puskas, PhD student Jamie Farrell, former uh, PhD student Gregory Waite, and now at Michigan Technological University, and Wu Lung Chang of National Central University of Taiwan. Other co authors were Bernard Steinberger, Geological Survey of Norway, and Richard O'Connell of Harvard University. So this was from University of Utah Research, and it's on FIS.org. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support.